Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Functionized Podcast. I am your host, the mad scientist, Jim. If you should hear some sadomachoistic yelling and screaming and things that just seem unholy coming into this background of this podcast today, certain members of the Fit Lab are a little bit loud when they are on the Spanish Inquisition ARX. They go above and beyond with their effort, to which is what it is. Uh, It was kind of funny the other day. We had a brand new individual coming in for a experience, and she was terrified to be here. And we, we do all that we can to make individuals feel comfortable because this is our home. And when in our home, we want you to feel like you should be here. You, we want you here. And we had somebody, he is yelling and screaming and just, ah, uh, albeit he, his numbers were no better than our eight year old son, Xander, but which is also the funniest part. Those that are screaming the loudest have numbers that, I got to say, suck. But um, where was I going with this? Yeah, if you hear the the yelling and screaming in the background, we got that going on. Oh, by the way, um, the individual is part of the lab now, so we cool with that. Today on the Functionize podcast, we're going to talk about crap. IBS, IBD. So the other day I was talking with Dave Sherwin on a podcast that should be out by now. And he was talking about how when people drink water, sometimes their stomach can hurt. And then utilizing a mineral source in the water in order to break the surface tension and ameliorate the pain in the stomach. So I started reading a little bit more about that. And there are certain levels of IBS that you can experience this with. So I wanted to delve into that a little bit and bring my curiosity out to you. So a little background, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, IBD, irritable bowel disease, uh, share symptoms. So if you have certain symptoms that occur daily of, we're going to get all gross here, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, abdominal pain, um, unlike IBS, IBD is consistently associated with inflammation and oxidative stress. So what can we do about this? So I was starting to read some research and looking at biophenols, a.k.a. polyphenols. Uh, they're phytochemicals. They have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties. And though they've been shown to interact with the gut microbiome, uh, their effects on gastrointestinal conditions are unknown. So what do we do? Let's delve into the research. So I was checking out a meta-analysis. It involved uh, 23, I believe it is, yeah, 23 parallel uh, crossover randomized placebo-controlled trials. I love the RCTs. Systematic reviews even better, but RCTs are, well, they're kind of fun to do as well. And a total of 25 different interventions. There were 1,566 participants with a DX of IBD, mild to moderate, um, or IBS. So the most of the research was done using peppermint oil and other interventions, aloe vera. You ever drink aloe? You get it at the uh, Walgreens, CVS, comes in a big tub and... I got into that for a while, just drinking aloe, thinking, good for me. Tastes awful. Um, That's some ice, though. A little sprig of mint, and it's not so bad. Uh, Other things that have been studies are anise oil, curcumin, ginger, mastic tree, pomegranate peels, just straight up resveratrol, sans wine, uh, soy, isoflavones, wheatgrass. You used to do those shots every day, too. And... uh, uh, yarrow or a biophenol blend. So we took some, uh, we, I did not personally take them, but 
The researchers took uh, gastrointestinal symptom scores and measured using the uh, visual analog scales, the VAS, which if you're unfamiliar with that, it's the photos. Um, you can use photos of the happy smiling face. That's kind of the bastardized version. Otherwise, it's a uh, ruler scale of 1 to 10. How, where's the pain on that? And it pretty much lines up, for the most part, pretty accurately. Uh, other outcomes were quality of life, adverse events, and markers of inflammation. Uh, a lot of inflammation markers on there. I won't bore you, but uh, uh, and oxidative stress, specifically SOD, uh, superoxide, dimutase, and oxidized LDL. What are the results? The results are in. So peppermint oil does improve gastrointestinal symptoms in IBS. Resveratrol improve gastrointestinal symptoms and quality of life in IBD. These are good things. So if you have an, a uh, DX of IBS, better be using some peppermint oil here. Uh, resveratrol, hey, okay. uh, we have here in our dispensary, you can get resveratrol, high dose caps there, and uh, avoid the alcohol consumption. And a lot of people also think that, like I keep on bringing up wine, um, a lot of people think that you get a lot of resveratrol from bottled bottle of wine. You don't. Uh, you'd have to drink like five bottles of wine to get one serving of resveratrol cap. The, excuse me here, the markers of inflammation and oxidative stress uh, were measured in IBD. Aloe, the mastic tree, resveratrol, and yarrow improved the CRP, which is a marker of inflammation. Uh, in one trial, was veritrol and ginger improved uh, other markers of oxidative stress, uh, but total antioxidant capacity wasn't really affected. Um, one of the studies showed that the mastic tree reduced oxidized LDL, where veritrol reduced the tumor necrosis factor and superoxide dimutase. So it's not like a one-size-fits-all. Go figure. One pill's not going to fix everything, and I'm not advising to just start taking pills. Now, we're talking here about different substances to ameliorate the pain. Now, why is the pain there in the first place? That's what I want to know. And this comes down to your diet, what you're putting into your body. Straight up, it's what you're putting into the body that's causing these effects. And with these effects, you're now taking something exogenous to reduce the inflammation that's causing the pain. So this is a nice Band-Aid. You know, the, these studies that I've gone over here and looking at is that Band-Aid. But why do you need to put a Band-Aid on when you can just stop scraping your knee? Uh, yes, it's a metaphor. Stop scraping your knee on the sidewalk every day. You don't need a Band-Aid. Eh. So, word of advice, stop scraping your knee. If you do have IBS, IBD, uh, don't, just don't, don't, don't start taking a pill that's going, that the doctor gives you to fix, so-called fix it. All they're doing is, again, band-aiding up. That is a temporary thing. I mean, you put a band-aid on, we're going to go with this metaphor here, you put a band-aid on to help protect a cut, right, from further damage, injury from either bacteria or re-injuring it or making it worse. So that's all that these pills are doing. What I would like to see you do is to not scrape yourself again. So the proper testing in this case here would be an IgG or IgA test. That's to see if what you're consuming, whatever type of food it is, whether it's this cup of coffee, uh, this fat little painter, squishy guy that uh, Mr. Jose Angeles uh, gave us here. Um, yeah, don't eat the fat, squishy guy. But no matter what it may be, your body can have a reaction as if a foreign antigen, a bacteria or a virus was entered into your system there. It sends white blood cells out. Well, some people eat some chicken. You have some whey protein. You have a piece of pizza, uh, sushi. I mean, you name it, a hot dog, a hamburger. It doesn't matter what it is broccoli. I'm going to just keep on naming stuff. Somebody stop me. 
you can have the same reaction. So those white blood cells, the IgG, IgA, they may start flying through your body. And when they fly through your body, inflammation goes up. And if you're inflamed, such as in your digestive tract, you're going to experience symptoms such as pain, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, all that fun stuff. So if you're experiencing those, it's your diet. Let's fix that. The different healthy substances that I just uh, shared with you are definite ways to help ameliorate the pain while we are researching for you and figuring out what the root cause of it is. And let's just get rid of that in the first place. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. And let's do something a little bit different this time. Do me a huge favor and leave a five-star review if you've liked this and share with all your family and friends, um, whether they you think it might be helpful for them in some way or not. Hopefully you've been entertained on this short little podcast. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. Be a better version of yourself. Keep the grunting and groaning as I am hearing. And actually, it's more like uh, screaming from a Saw movie down and live functionized.